cold storage <laughs> at least for us. Uh, what we started off with was a couple of these bad boys. Uh, don't get me wrong, they're great if you're doing an overnighter, you pick up your ice close to camp. Uh, but with anything, especially the Eskies, the ice will take up a lot of the space, meaning that you can't carry as much food uh, or store as many cans. Uh, very important. <laughs> All right, these ones we like because they are flat pack. So, obviously, these ones we haven't used in a while. We used them for one weekend and then basically got rid of them. Fold down flat. We do, they do come with lids, so you can close them up. Again, uh, great for day trips, ice close to camp. Uh, uh, we did end up moving up to an Esky. Larger holds a hell of a lot more. Uh, the, the food, again, with the ice. This one you can get ice as soon as you leave home or even halfway up the road. Uh, enough for us for a couple of days. Uh, the ice is still there Sunday. At the moment, what we are running is our new favorite toy. We have our brass monkey. We picked this one up from J-Car, this one here. I can't remember if it's a 55 or a 65 litre. It is dual zone, so fridge, freezer, runs off a 12 volt power. Uh, if you want to use it at home, it also comes with a 240 volt wall adapter. Plug straight into the side, Bluetooth, so you can set the temperature. Uh, it's got USB port, so you can charge your phone, so you can run the Bluetooth. Um, this one here, we went this side because with the car that we've got, uh, again, the Ford Escape, but this one fits in perfectly. So this one here, what we will do, is, this will be our first camp trip using the Brass Monkey. We've used it around the house uh, and a few day trips. But what we'll do, we'll plug it into the wall on the Thursday night, we'll get it down to temperature. Uh, Friday morning, Friday afternoon when we get home, we'll get everything from our big kitchen fridge into here uh, and everything that we need. Chuck that into the car and we will be set. Obviously, we can run the 12 volt while we drive. This one here, great little fridge. And here we have our toys. These are the essentials that, that we take. Uh, obviously, some you're probably not gonna want, uh, especially if you're saving space. What we'll do, we'll start off with the batteries. So, two different sizes. You've got your five amp and your two and a half amp. These ones are interchangeable with every Ryobi 18 volt. All right, if you got the 36, unfortunately you are gonna to have to get a larger battery. What we've got here is our six port charger. This one does not come camping with us. Um, we plug it in, it stays in the garage. We get back, all our batteries get plugged in and they're charged by the next morning. Uh, what we do is if we do need to charge our batteries, we've got our one-off. All right, so this fits perfectly in with the rest of our camping gear. It does run a 240 volt, uh, which we run off a can inverter and 12 volt. I'll get to that one in a minute. A uh, little tip that we picked up watching some of our favorite four wheel drive shows is we take a drill. It is purely to get our peg started for the tent, our gazebo, basically anything where the ground is too hard and I'm not gonna ruin it by pouring water over it. It's just not gonna sink in deep enough. We've got our 12 volt, uh, our 18 volt uh, vacuum. Uh, nice and snug, fits perfectly in with everything else. And we use this to get all the twigs, sticks and dust out of our tent uh, and off anything that we may need to before we roll it up and chuck it back in the car. This way we can keep the car as clean as possible. Uh, what we've got here, these are our absolute essentials. We've got our light. Uh, again, all run off single battery. Best part is three settings and they come with a USB charge. So plug it in, plug your phone in. Uh, apparently we've got more USB ports than we know what to do with. And this one here is the radio. Uh, Bluetooth, so we can play whatever music we like. USB, but great reception. Uh, don't turn that up too loud. The speakers do sort of become distorted. Um, Ryobi have bought out a larger radio that runs off the batteries. Uh, may need to look at getting that in the near future. Now, my favorite toy. We have the 18 volt brushless Ryobi chainsaw. This one, we went, we went battery operated. Uh, I've used the petrol in the past. And with uh, transporting kids and dogs, I really don't want to have the, uh, the smell of petrol in the car. Uh, these ones here, all I need is a little bit of bar oil in the front, make sure these batteries are charged. We can clear any way, uh, any trees out of the way that may have fallen across the, uh, the path 
or it's great to just chop up the firewood. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, with our single uh, battery charger, we use a can inverter. This one comes with us on every trip. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we both have bad knees, so we also do use an air mattress with a built-in uh, inflator. Chuck that straight into the 12 volt, plug in the, uh, the mattress or the charger or anything else, and away you go. Started off with a rubber mallet that we have since gotten rid of. At the moment, I'm just carrying the Stanley Fat Max Hammer. Great to, to knock those pegs into the ground. Uh, I did forget that on one trip, so we ended up using the back of our hatchet. Um, this one, I still haven't figured out how to keep the case on, but it works just as well. Uh, does need a sharpen this one. We use generally just to, to chop down the little sticks uh, with a little bit of force uh, to start our fire. And of course, we've got our fan. This one probably won't come with us for the next couple of months. We use this one over our uh, our camp cook uh, that we've set up in our gazebo. Um, that's basically what we do. Uh, still trying to figure out exactly how we're going to Tetris all this in with everything else we take. Uh, we love Ryobi. Uh, one, the colour. Um, the green goes really well with the red hair. Um, but they're cheap, they're everyday use, uh, and they're exactly what we need to get the job done while we're out and about. The next thing that you should really invest in, um, <laughs> this one's a GoPro one that we were given uh, from our family, but um, is a wet bag. Now, all of these tools uh, do add up in price and you don't want them to be ruined by the weather. And especially when you're going camping in winter, we've had campsites in the middle of summer, to be fair, and it's rained all night and the campsite has flooded. So the last thing you want is for these to be on the floor. So we got this wet bag, we pop all of our batteries in it, all of our electronics into this bag and close it up and at night time we know that everything is going to be dry in the morning in case it does rain. Yes, you can pop things in your tent, but uh, tents are already crowded as it is. So get yourself a wet bag, these are fantastic, whatever brand it is. It's also a backpack so we can carry that quite easily if you can't park near your campsite. And there we have it. So in here we've got all our Ryobi batteries, our drill, our speaker, our light, uh, the can inverter. Uh, we didn't pack the large charger as we mentioned, but everything but our brushless chainsaw fits into the GoPro, chucked to the back of the car, uh, and away we go. So these are some of our favorite cooking items that we bring uh, with us. We don't always bring this one. Depending on which campsite we're going to, some already have um, these inbuilt. Um, generally they don't, but this is just sort of a mixed bag as to whether or not we bring this. It does come in really handy though. Chuck it over the fire, obviously. Um, Dylan will show you. It opens up and then you can sit it quite nicely onto the fire. The kids like this one because then they can cook their sausages over the fire and they think it's awesome. Uh, is a bit of a pain in the ass and to is clean. Too big to fit on our table. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bit of a pain in the ass to clean um, and this one generally ends up getting cleaned when we get home um, but it does come with a really cool bag which keeps it nice and clean and away from the elements if we don't happen to use it that particular trip. Don't think we'll bring it this one this trip because the food that we've got planned to cook doesn't really require it. These we don't like. We didn't buy um, the big water um, containers from the camping stores. We like to buy these ones. I think they're about three or four dollars from Woolies, and because of their height, they sit really well nice to our silver tubs. They sit really well in the car. For two of us, or for the four of us, when we have the kids with us, we'll just bring two for a weekend trip of those. I think they're. 10, 10 litres, litres. Um, and they generally will do all of our cooking, our coffees, our cleaning, um, drinking water for hikes and things like that. So 20 litres for two days or two nights are pretty handy. These, we always have a heap of these in our garage. We generally bring two or, th or three with us depending on what meals we're cooking, um, especially if we've got the kids because we can just cook a bunch of things, chuck it in there and it's a free-for-all. So these you can get pretty much from anywhere, Bunnings, Woolies, sort of really anywhere, but they're great to have in your tub. <laughs> This one, uh, this needs a bit of a season today. Need to get to that this afternoon. Um, <laughs> I haven't cleaned that from our last trip, so I'll get onto that today. Um, but this is awesome. We have yet to use this particular one in the fire. We've only used this particular one on the gas stove um, just because the 
last few camping trips we've had has been in the middle of summer. We haven't actually started a flyer, um, but this will get a good workout this particular weekend, which is great. Um, I like these because you can use both ends, so if it's just the two of us, we're not cooking that much food, I use the lid to cook rather than the big pot, which uh, comes in really handy. This one is our kids' favourite. Um, it doesn't usually come with us when it's just the two of us going camping, but the kids definitely think this is fun. Uh, did take us a couple goes to figure out how the hell to use this and get the sandwich to come out cleanly. Lots of butter. Lots of butter, <laughs> lots of butter and lots of uh, canola spray, because I tell you what, just a bit of margarine did not work the first time. It was a mess. These are our gas mates. We have two of these. I think these particular ones we got from Bunnings. I think they're about 20 bucks from Bunnings. We only get the single burner. Um, the double burners, they're quite expensive. And considering you can buy two and for less than half the price uh, of the single burners. And also, if it's just the two of us, we don't always need the double burner. We'll just bring the one. Um, always double check these before you go away um, camping. In our last camping trip, we actually ran out of gas. We threw the gas bottle out. Luckily, we checked this to put a new one in, otherwise we would have been screwed. Um, gas bottles are quite cheap. Um, I think these ones here are from Bunnings. I think they come in like a five pack for about ten bucks, maybe. And those ones, I think, were the Kmart ones. I think it was a four pack for eight nine bucks. Eight, nine bucks. Yeah doesn't really matter they all do the exact same thing uh, if you haven't used one of these before they do have a little notch oh, little notch here which sits quite nicely into this section here right, line it up you pop it in um, and then once it's closed you can turn it on Boy, and right. always check that it's working before you go away camping these are really, really handy, especially if you're not going to light a fire. As I said, the last few trips that we've done have been in the middle of summer. It's too hot to start a fire, and or fire it's fire bans. Cert certainly play their part, mate. Yeah. yeah. To enjoy it. Now, these ones we use in our gazebo. Um, so obviously, if you are cooking under a gazebo, please be careful um, and try and stay away from the wind. You can use the box as a windbreak, but they do tend to fall down. Um, you can buy windbreaks from camping stores. We haven't bothered with those. Um, they are quite expensive. We or just put it up on its side. Yeah, you, you can do that, but if it is quite windy, they do fall down. So we just find cooking in our marquee is a lot easier away from the wind, but obviously just be careful of burning the place down. Um, the other things that we have is our camp showers. Now, we don't always bring these with us, especially if we're just going on a weekend trip. But if you are going longer, you can bring these. These ones are just like the basic of all basic camp showers. Um, these ones, I think, were from Kmart. Um, and these ones are 20 litres. You just fill them up, pop them in the sun, and um, the direct sunlight will warm that up. You can also just boil some of the water and pour it back in there for a warm shower and it comes with the little nozzle uh, that you connect down here just do be careful these do come loose and you can end up with water all over your stuff in the car if you're not careful the other <laughs> things we do tend to keep in our um, grey box that we showed you earlier are these inflatable pillows because the amount of times that Dylan and I leave on a trip and we completely forget our pillows and get to camp and realise our crap. So this is the next best option. They are really not comfortable, um, but it's better than sleeping on a jacket or something like that. So also in our grey box, we keep this little bike pump um, that helps us blow them up or sometimes we bring the foot pump or these are small so you can just blow them up uh, using your mouth so really just depends Dylan did mention earlier we used to bring this mallet um, look this might be really good if you're camping somewhere where it's sandy um, but as you can see we've dug holes in it it uh, just does not work in places that are hard um, ground then we have our toilet. Um, as Dylan alluded to earlier, we both do have really bad knees now and we're getting older and sometimes you just want those creature comforts. Most of the campsites we go to do not have um, drop toilets or those types of facilities. So we bring this along and even if we do end up going to a campsite that does have drop toilets when we take the kids camping, we still pack this because 
it don't smell as bad. Um, and thank you to the chemicals for that. <laughs> you fill this part here with water, that's what flushes it, um, and you pour the blue chemical down into this bottom section which breaks down obviously everything that you put into there and then you pop the pink into the water tank here which then gives it a nice smelly um, <clears throat> aroma when you flush the toilet. These work really really well. These last the two of us or the four of us with the kids for a weekend. Um, we're quite lucky that we have a sewage hole in our backyard so we tend to just bring this home and empty it into the sewage hole although we have uh, been known to empty it into a drop toilet um, if there is one just saves us digging a hole whilst we are out at camp but the beauty of the blue chemical is it does break down all the toilet paper and everything so it is safe to bury uh, hence why we do have the shovel just in case we need to do that and here we have our fun electronics. Uh, we do have our battery box put away in the car uh, and be able to power our fridge and our camp lights. These are again all from Kings. Um, four wheel drive super center, absolutely incredible deals, incredible products. Um, these here we plan to use in our gazebo. They all join together. Thankfully it's not just one. There are, I think it was four in there. Uh, they run off 12 volt. Uh, a, uh, jump cable uh, attachment which we can run off the external uh, port for our battery. Um, how we plan to charge our battery once we get it, we set it up, because uh, the last thing I want to do is run out of juice while we're away, is we've got a 200 watt solar blanket uh, plugged straight in, charges the battery, um, we can also use it to charge, uh, to jump start the car thankfully due to the attachments here. Uh, again from Kings, also came with a solar charge controller. Uh, nice six solar panels on here and folds up to almost nothing. Meaning that when you want to get away, it's as simple as folding up and putting everything back in its pocket. Uh, our battery box is exactly what we need. So we've got two Anderson plugs. I'm going to say one of them is input to charge the battery. Uh, and on the back here, we have two USBs and a 12 volt outlet. So we can plug the fridge in from the fridge, meaning that I can use the 12 volt for our lights, the Anderson plug for our fridge, and still have an Anderson input for our solar blanket, meaning that we're never going to run out of charge. And I'm hoping once that's plugged in, it will also tell me the level on our battery. Um, but fingers crossed for that. And there you have it. These are our selections of Ryobis uh, and a, a few odds and ends in between. So this is what we will take on every trip. Uh, the drill, uh, as we've mentioned, to help with pegs. The radio, so uh, I don't get annoyed or start annoying the wife. Uh, and a few others. So stay tuned for our trip to Millowa. A uh, beautiful two day, uh, sorry, two nights, couple of days out by the Ovens River. It was bloody cold. Um, there's a few clips of us jumping in the water just to prove that. Enjoy. Enjoy.